I'm cooking gumbo today. And most times whenever I cook gumbo, my children expect that uh, like the pre-stages of me cutting up my sausage and browning it in that big pot back there. I always uh, leave them some extra sausage and put barbecue sauce and they think they got an appetizer. Nothing but sausage. Smokes. Smoke cages sausage. We gotta be going to Dollar Tree seeing these little things. Use them at home, girl. Make sure family and they at a party. Yeah. You do not have to wait on a special occasion to serve hors d'oeuvres at your house. Girls! Stop it, Kanye. Yeah, so hors d'oeuvres. So hors d'oeuvres. Y'all can take them back if y'all want. I told you she was making these. No. I'm gonna wash my hands. And then I'm gonna finish cooking because some of y'all nasty. Y'all be licking y'all fingers while y'all cooking. And then y'all don't wash your hands. I have to wash my hands on it. Huh? I don't know what your daddy had y'all doing. So first, I wash my hands as you can see. For, um. First, I generally start off by cutting my sausage. This is smoked sausage. Um, I like the brand Rabbitohs. I generally get it when, why do I got this so close? I generally get it when I go visit my dad in Lake Charles, Louisiana. But some grocery stores around my area in Louisiana have Rabbitoh sausage slowly but surely, but sometimes when I can't find it or I want to try something new, I just get Cajun smoked sausage. So this one is up close to where my daddy lives too. Um, it's called a Best Stop, and this is some very good sausage. I got that, and baby, I don't know how to say this. Conquer, conquer. <laughs> Conca Cajun sausage. So I mix those and I cut them about that thin. See? So we're just gonna start off by pour, um, putting our cut up sausage in this pot. This is a magnet like pot. And my children know when I, when I pull out this pot, I'm about to make something real good. Most times I use this when I'm making gumbo or boiling seafood or something. Clean as you go, I'm sorry. I can use this again. I have a problem turning the fire down. Once upon a time, I used to make my room from scratch. That's when I ain't know no bill. Now I thought, I was growner, a better woman if I made it from scratch. But now, if it's gonna do the same thing, if it's gonna save you time, why well, I'm gonna work harder and not smarter. I used to make a roux over the stove, have to stir until my wrist hurt, and then I discovered another way, and I used to cook my roux in the oven. And then one day I said, I'm about to try the jar roux. Turns out, my gumbo still tastes the same. So now I buy these, but while I'm getting ready to cook this, I realized I do not have that much left. And my husband is on his way back from the store, so we'll have to wait to resume this um, when he makes it back with the another thing of root. See, the sausage is going. We want to keep all that flavor in the pot, so after a while, I'm, I'm getting ready to flip them over. But whatever's left in the pot, we want to keep that for uh, seasoning purposes. But this is how the root looks. It looks just like that. And so I generally take that out and then it melts in the pot. We'll come back and show you. Okay, so the sausage has sausaged. <laughs> and this is how your pot should be looking now. That's all the stuff from the sausage. We wanna keep that. Um, as soon as I get my roux, we're gonna add the roux to that. 
And I don't know how much I be adding, like half of the jar. And make sure your fire is down low and stir until it gets to a specific consistency. And once I do that, I'll show you how it looks. Why are we waiting on husband? I had to make sure I press record. While we're waiting on husband, we could be cooking the rice. If you're intimidated by rice, it's really not that hard. I used to always have gummy rice. Then I started cooking it in the Instapot, but now I cook it over the stove. So you're just gonna add water, just like that. This is some um, extra long grain rice. I do not rinse my rice. Um, I do not measure my rice. I just pull my rice in here and I know when enough is enough. And I'm gonna show you when enough is enough <laughs> compared to the amount of water we have. So, we have about that much water. Oh Lord. <laughs> Hold it, Miss Funk. This is funny. Get old episode. Looks like I have just the amount that I want. Let me see, make sure I got enough. Okay, so yeah, that's good. So, your rice gonna be looking like that. You see how it's just a, enough for your finger can do like that? And like, maybe like an inch of your finger can go in the water? You need about that much covering the the rice, okay? Salt your water too before your rice. Now, this where, this where the part come in that, that we can make it difficult. You gonna turn that fire on, and you gonna just cut it all the way down to the lowest set, as low as it can go, okay? Now, you gonna take that pot, the top that came with the pot, you gonna do like this here. Just gonna cover it. Then you are gonna wait about 15 minutes. I'll be forgetting. I just be cooking and I be like, oh, the rice probably about ready. And I look at the rice, and if the rice look fluffy, then I be like, okay, the rice ready. But generally, it's like 15 minutes. <laughs> My man made that. Oh, and he got. Seven pounds <laughs> a crawfish. So we're gonna have a little um intermission. No! <coughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> it went out the wrong pipe. <laughs> Them spicy. Okay, huh? Uh-uh. Yeah. This ain't my normal dealer. My normal crawfish dealer closed today. Cause it's Sunday. And this ain't frozen, huh? It was frozen? Yeah, last year. Last year? The way they did it, I, I was some type of way they were talking about. I mean, they still taste like crawfish. They just... It's not crawfishing, but they crawfishing. But not crawfishing enough. But the juice juice. But when you when you bite the crawfish. Hey, God, come on. When you bite the crawfish, it's just like when you bite the extra crawfish, the texture different. But the season tastes good. And it still gives a crawfish. Feel like I'm still enjoying it. You just had my regular enjoyment. So what I might do with these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel a lot of these. I'm gonna put some of these in the crawfish, they go in mean, the gumbo, they're gonna soften up. I wanna add some crawfish today, but I'm gonna add some crawfish today. And then I'm gonna say the rest of these things for crawfish bits. The ones I don't suck the head on. Very good move. Move it. Well, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, honey. You got these things. And you actually remembered it. 
so sweet. Thank you, bitch. Mom, do you need a spoon? Mm-mm. I got a special treat. Okay, let's fix, finish fixing the gumbo. Okay, the roux is here. Okay, so here's our roux. This is generally, I do one of these, a heaping spoon. Put that in there. Let me see what the directions say. They say, you know we don't follow the directions. Um, one and a half cups of raw, of this roux. One and a half cups, how I know? Like, girl, I'm about to do this. Two, then I'm gonna do, see you don't be measuring, another one. Then when you have about that much left, then that's enough. Okay, so it looks disgusting right now. This is how it should be looking. Your fire is like on medium heat. We're just gonna mash that in until it gets to the consistency that we want. All right, so here's our consistency now. So now, um, most um, people in Louisiana, we have these right here. This is considered the Holy Trinity. That's what they call this around here. Now, ain't nothing like Jesus. Now, this ain't him. This is for the Louisiana people. When it comes to food, this is the Holy Trinity. Okay, we need all of these for most recipes. So this is onions, bell pepper, celery, and I could very well put all of this, I mean, cut it myself, but I don't be having time for that. I got this from Rouse's Markets for $5.79. So we're gonna put a lot of that in this Okay, that's, that's about enough. She have about that much left. Okay, like half the jar or container. It's an all-purpose seasoning with salt, garlic, powder, and pepper. Um, I love the way um, it tastes. This was my favorite before this one, but I still use both of them because this one has more spice. So, yes, that. I'm not big on brands, whichever one is cheapest. If it tastes good, it's gonna do what it got to do. So I got this from Target, some onion powder, garlic powder, parsley. This one, it's a secret weapon. Get some chicken powder, chicken seasoning to use. I use this a lot in my dishes. Some cayenne pepper in Louisiana, we say red pepper. I got some bay leaves. I think I have thyme in my refrigerator, some fresh thyme. I like using fresh uh, herbs, like fresh porcelain stuff. I have some of this, so I'm gonna add some fresh stuff in here. And then you can use seafood stock or chicken stock, but sometimes I don't be having it and I don't have it. So I'm about to use this and some water. Now we're going to pour that sausage back in there. Mix it all together. Number two. All right. Now nah, this don't have a lick of flavor, so we that's what we about to start experimenting. I forgot to add the cayenne pepper. We always really could go back and add it, but I like to add it right here. Let me start cooking it. Right. I thought about the rice because I turned it all the way down low and we just right here, so um, I lied. You can turn it all the way low, but it's not about to be 15 minutes. You can turn it all the way down low, you don't have to babysit it, but if you want it to be done quicker, less than 15 minutes, then just turn your, um, 
you know, everybody's so different, so it's hard to give this, but maybe turn it like on three, you know, just low, low and slow. Cooking with Freddie Jean. <laughs> Some people use gumbo filet. Let me show you how they look. Some people use this. I'm, I've never really been a fan of gumbo filet. Um, but if you ever go somewhere and have gumbo and you want it to be a little thicker, you can ask for some gumbo filet. Just pour it in there, stir it around, and it's going to make it thicker. But I'm not always crazy about the flavor. I think it messed up my recipe to me, so I really don't care for it. A lot of people love it. Some people hate okra because of the slime and seeds and all that kind of stuff, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So I put about this much in my air fryer, and we're gonna use these here because we don't feel like washing it every time. Rotisserie chicken. So these, I got two bags of these. Normally I get them from the same place I get my crawfish from, but they're closed today because it's Sunday. So two bags of these. And these are the blue crabs. You get ready to add to the gumbo. And on the back, they have their own um, gumbo recipe. So you might want to try this one. Okay, 20 minutes have passed. Mix this around. I want it to be, um, I want it to cook even more. So I'm gonna put it on again. It's in the shrimp, but I just forgot that I forgot to put the bay leaf in there. So, and my thyme. So I'm gonna go add that to my gumbo pot. Cause I've not been giving y'all times. <laughs> Cause I really don't know a time. I just be moving. Just keep moving. Mm -hmm. with this, I've added the time in the, uh, bay leaves, and I'm gonna let this cook for maybe like ten minutes, and then I'm gonna taste my seasoning to like my 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 base to see if it tastes the way I want it to taste. And if not, then we're gonna add some more seasoning, and then after that, we're going to add the okra that's in there. But while that is doing what it got to do, I'm about to peel the crawfish. I normally don't add crawfish, but because my husband brought some, girl, I'm about to add it. The only reason why I'm be adding it because we be trying to keep the cost down. You know, the rice ready. Okay, it's been about six more minutes. So that looks like I want it. I'm about to add this to the gumbo now. And our crawfish gonna give you some flavor. Too. Okay, I've peeled these so far. That's what we have to go. We're about to add this to the gumbo. It's been about 10 minutes. These are already cooked, so we really don't have to wait much time. And then I have to finish peeling these, and I'm gonna save the rest of those, that crawfish, and some of those crawfish heads to make crawfish bisque at another day. So within this recipe, we have chicken that we gonna uh, save to make chicken bones. Uh, the, the chicken bones is left over. We gonna save that to make chicken stock for another recipe. Then we gonna save these crawfish to make crawfish bisque. And now we're about to add these to the gumbo. It's hot. Ooh. Okay. Let's see. That's how it's looking now. Mm. That's good. We don't need to do nothing else. 
we have shrimp. These do not take no time to cook, so I'm gonna add these and we're gonna let these stay. Um, I'm gonna turn my fire down and let it cook for like five to seven minutes, and then the family gonna be ready to eat. Nah. Plate this up for my family and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Okay, I chopped up some fresh parsley and green onions, so we're gonna add that. And in the words of my mother in law, because she's straight from New Orleans, we're gonna add this to make it healthy. Okay. Parsley, it actually does add flavor, but New Orleans people, you know, my husband friend, they think they just, you know, they be, they say this make it healthy. So this is my man plate, I'm about to go bring it to him. Ain't that looking good? A whole, I just thought you had to be a whole shit from New Orleans and I ain't even from New Orleans, but my man is, and I'm right up the road from the country. And I'm kind of like, you know how you had a cousin from out of town, but she's still down? And sometimes she could come in from out of town and teach you some things, teach you a thing or two. I ain't from New Orleans, don't wanna be. I love being from the country. But New Orleans life and living is right in my backyard because when I was growing up, when we went to go shopping, we went to New Orleans. When we wanted to go do some fun, we went to New Orleans, it's right up the road. But there is a difference. People from New Orleans say we from the country and the people from New Orleans say they the city. And so city meets country in my home. And so my husband brings some city things to me and I bring some country things to him and we bring it together. We got two country city kids. I'm from New Orleans, I understand the culture because it's right in my backyard, but I'm not them and I don't want to be them. But I still can teach you how to be them. You understand? <laughs> Welcome to my world. I've had it before, I don't have to have it, but many people from my area and my husband's area, they like to put potato salad in their gumbo or grilled cheese. I have not done that, but I have done potato salad, and it was very good, but I don't have to have it. Let me go get my man his plate. It is a colder day in Louisiana, and my husband has the fire pit going. That's how he will be enjoying his gumbo. Mm -hmm. 